Hi everyone, we're here at DevOps 2014, and I'm here with uh, Cyril Motier, who's a Google developer expert in uh, Android, and we're going to talk specifically today about Android Wear, because he is actually giving a talk about Android Wear at this conference. Welcome. Welcome, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Android Wear is, um, Android from, from the very beginning has had different form factors and has from day one assumed that people would produce phones and eventually tablets of different uh, forms and shapes and developers had to deal with that. Yeah. Um, now we have Android Wear, so, which obviously is a whole lot less real, real estate, uh, but it's probably not just a smaller form factor. Tell us about how it changes things from a developer perspective. Well, yes. As you said, Android Wear is not just a tiny Android. Uh, actually, it's a tweaked Android that is made for wearables, and uh, by tweaked I mean that they completely reinvented the way that you interact with the device. And this is done mostly by creating a new UI, a new user interface, where the paradigms are completely different because you don't have a grid of apps anymore. You have a principle of cards, and each card is actually an information from one application that you can swipe or have more info about. Right. So I, I think that that's really key to understand that, yeah. that, that people shouldn't be just trying to shrink down an application. Exactly. So you have to think completely differently. And uh, this is done basically by starting a completely new design process. So drop everything that you've done for the phones and tablets and try and, and start uh, thinking about something completely new so for a, a small uh, form factor. And you also said about shapes and, and stuff like that. Actually, there is something which is quite funny because uh, we've always been prepared as Android developers uh, about um, different form factors, but they were always square or at least a rectangle uh, screen. And now we have round screens, which is completely new to us, but uh, the good thing is it's nice to see that Android adapts itself co quite correctly to that kind of uh, screens. Great. So uh, actually, I think uh, what's important uh, is to find a good use case for the wearable. We're yes. not about trying to take any and every application and take it running uh, there. So the first obvious use case for which I understand you don't have much to do is notifications in general. Yeah. So um, a wearable is, uh, or Android Wear, is paired with a a phone or a tablet, so any um, notification you get on that device will also be mirrored to, yeah. uh, and, and the developer doesn't need to do anything for that. Is yeah, that I, this, is, uh, this is working out of the box, and the thing is, what, well, it's a spoiler about my conference that we'll do uh, tomorrow, but m basically there are three main principles uh, on Android Wear, which is that your application needs to be uh, glanceable, it needs to be contextual, and it needs to be... Uh, or to require low interaction or no interaction. And uh, when you think about those principles, actually, uh, the only thing on Android, the current Android, I mean, on phones and tablets that fits to these principles are notifications. So out of the box, um, Android Wear is uh, displaying all of the notifications that are actually displayed on the phones and tablets. And those notifications are synced. So when you swipe away some notification on the wearable, they are also swiped from the phones and vice versa. Yeah, so that's, that's probably very good. In terms of uh, using the notification API from Android, is there anything special you need to do so it looks good on the wearable as well? well as I said, by default it works, but it's not quite fancy, so you can tweak uh, the notification by using some wearable extender uh, uh, classes, which are uh, provided as part of the, um, as part of the uh, support library. So by doing that, you can uh, have access to some new uh, notification features that are only available to wearables, such as you can change the background, you can have some principle of stacks or pages right. that are quite nice if you want to Group you know, things split together the information in, in several cards. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually you get to a point where this is not enough, you want to get to custom UIs, you want to build an app that actually runs on the Android system you have on your on your wrist. Yes. So uh, that involves building a full new app, which eventually is an APK, which needs to make it make make its way to uh, to the wearable. So take us through how uh, hard it is, what it takes to actually, uh, what kind of uh, APIs you have available, what can you do, yes. and maybe the workflow. Yeah. So when we when you're stuck with notification you have to go through the custom APK path. And uh, what most people don't know about that is that actually Android Wear is just Android. 
uh, as the time we're talking, it's uh, KitKat. So what you're doing for tablets uh, is radically the same as what you can do on wearables. So you have access to the exact same set of APIs, except some uh, packages like USB, you don't have access to USB it makes no sense. because right. it makes yeah, it makes no sense on, on a wearable. But when you divide when you're creating an, an application uh, on on Android Wear, from the technical point of view, it's exactly the same as what you can do on, on phones and tablets. What you really have to keep in mind that is that it's different from the UX and UI point of view. This is the only difference between Android Wear and Android. Okay, I have another difference. Yeah. The wearable is not really connected, or it's connected yeah. to the phone, so not, there's not, a data... Not, not yet, but maybe it will in the future. Okay. And that's a good, the good point of using Android in Android Wear, because actually Android is future-proof. So when, I don't know, when the, the, the technology will evolve and uh, when no, um, wearable we have access to the network, then it will already be ready. We will have almost nothing to do because it just Android. Right, so roll back to today, to yeah. what we have and developers have today. Yeah. They can mostly, they need to use the, um, uh, the data layer APIs to yes. exchange data and then access the internet, for example. Yeah. Or, or, so how does that work? Uh, the, the watch cannot make a call to the internet directly. It goes through the phone for yeah. anything it has to do. Yeah, so nowadays what we have uh, is uh, um, a wearable that is connected to the phone, which is these both uh, phones and, and wearable are, con are considered as nodes in a network. Yes. And because the phone has more capabilities than the wearable, it acts like a server to uh, the wearable. So whenever you want to have access to some data on the internet, you have to make the wearable connect to the, um, to the phone, so to send and ask for information to the phone, and then the phone will ask to the network, so for instance, server on, on your backend. And uh, all of that is, uh, is done thanks to an API that is called uh, data, data API, but actually there is two other APIs, but most of the time you're using data APIs because it's uh, an API that syncs some data between the phone and the wearable automatically thanks to uh, Google Play services. So this runs on top of Google Play services. That, that, that's a very good point. I mean, Google yeah. Play services plays this really critical role of it embeds most of the magic yeah. that, that happens. It uh, can be updated on automatically without having to wait for a system update, which is quite nice because if there is some fixes to do, well, Google can push that automatically without asking uh, carriers or... So uh, that was a quick abstract view of everything, yeah. but you've been some, doing some really concrete work on working on an application, actually shipping it and having people use it. Tell us yeah. about uh, that, that experience. What is it and what does it do and maybe some lessons learned? Yeah, so I've been working on an application called Captain Train, which is a company that sells train tickets, but what we want to do is not just sell train ticket. What we want to do is to revolutionize the way that people experience train. And that means that we also want to improve the overall experience in the train. And uh, one of the things that we have to do in France is to um, make the a train agent, train controller, check uh, an, a barcode because this barcode contains actually your actual tickets. Your e-ticket, so, yeah. Yeah. So uh, because of that, well, we already had a phone application that was uh, displaying the barcode. It was nice. But when Android Wear was released, I was like, we need to do that on, on the wearable because it's uh, even more, uh, you know, usable and easy to do. You don't have to get your phone out of your pocket or uh, yeah. the, the, the unlock bag. it. And, you just yeah. have to look at your wrist and present your wrist to the uh, train agent, and that's it. Yeah, you so, get the notification. You know, you know where you're sitting, and yeah. then when the controller yeah. shows yeah. up, yeah, there is actually two parts: the the, the part prior to the the trip, and then the part during the trip. So yeah, you're right. There is also the part prior to the trip where well where you can have access to all of the information where such as your carriage, your seat, and stuff like that, at, at, at what time the train is leaving. And then you have the, the barcode that you can present uh, during the trip. So at the beginning, when I wanted to do that, I wanted to you know, stay into the line and uh, use notifications. But actually, we have one big problem uh, with barcode like that, is that we need to uh, keep the screen on, because you don't want to, uh, the, the wearable to turn off while you're presenting the, the barcode. And we also need to... And it needs to be for brightness, yeah, too. Yeah, for brightness. Right. And because of that, we have to go through the... Um, through the uh, custom APK uh, path. And uh, well, developing for Android Wear was quite nice, quite challenging because 
as I said, is very similar to what it's, we can do. Well, on, it's new. It's, it has rough edges. Yeah, it's got to have them. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's it's handwritten. It's new. It's uh, not that new. But I think what's new was the, the the communication between the phone and the and the wearable. And I spent quite a lot of time. Uh, you know. Understanding, understanding exactly, exactly what was going what on. Does, yes. Maybe a little bit too bit too bit of magic, yeah. magic going and on. I think maybe the problem is I don't. I always try to you know deep dive into uh, things and try to understand exactly how it works. Maybe it's okay for people that just want to do something and don't care about how it works. So basically, this application is automatically displaying the, the um, notification when it's. You know, important to the user. What we wanted to do is it's something contextual, that, really. Yeah, it's contextual. We, we we didn't want to uh, have an application kit that you have to start when you are in the station, the railway right. station. So it's automatic. It's like it works like magic. And this is what Android Wear is. It just displaying just the right info at just the right time. Right. It seems to fit very well with the with wearable should be uh, so uh, and that has been out people have been using it yes some good or bad feedback I've yes. people actually using it that in itself is a good feedback yeah I guess. we've we've uh, well the, the thing is uh, there is not a lot of people having an Android Wear device on, on their wrist. Still pretty but, new. Uh, the people having uh, an Android Wear device were, were like amazed because it's well yeah, like, this is quite, it's this magical moment, now, yeah. but it's magical, yeah, because it just shows at the right moment, and you can you know present that to the uh, train agent. And I think the most uh, amazed people were actually the, the train, train agents. agents. Yes, yes, because they were like, "What is that?" <laughs> oh, I, they were so proud to 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 scan my my wrist like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, and I'm pretty sure you had some fun too, you yeah. know, doing that when it's, it was not even released. Yeah, they especially were the during ones. the beta phase, because I was the only one having this application, and and the controller was. Well, I have never, I have never seen that, and it's pretty easy it, for them too, yeah. right? They, they too don't have to wait for somebody to pull out. And yeah. So it's it's quicker and faster for them exactly. as well. Exactly. So okay, it just works. So I guess we had a quick tour here. Uh, maybe I have one last final question. What kind of wear, watch do you do you wear? Uh, so I have the LG one. Okay. Tell <laughs> so me more about why you have this one more than than another one. Well, I I actually have the Samsung one and also the Moto 360, but I decided to switch back to uh, the LG LG one after using the Moto 360 for like three three weeks because uh, I think the Moto 360 is nice. It's well, it's good looking. It's better than uh, a square screen like that. But uh, it, I think it's too big. And uh, the second problem I have with that is that I'm a runner, and when I run with a leather bracelet, yeah. well, I sweat a lot, and I don't like to have you know the wet bracelet like yeah, that. Of course. And because this one is in plastic, well, I yeah, don't have can, that kind of problem. Yeah, you can change straps. Yeah, I can but change, but actually I would like to change between when I'm at work and when I'm running. I would like to have two different bracelets and this is not currently possible with yeah. Android Wear. I hope it will be in the future. Well, we already have different form factors, different yes. manufacturers, different everything, which is the idea of having, you know, exactly. one, one Android uh, Wear, but different implementations, exactly. different, different devices. So. I've, I've tested the application, for instance, on, on the three uh, de uh, devices and it was working correctly. So this is where Android, well, excels. It works everywhere. Great. So on that note, I think uh, that's all the time we have for it. Thank you, Serial, for uh, you. taking the time. And uh, go get some uh, Wear apps. Develop them, use them. Give us some feedback. Cheers.